we had decided that we wanted to go for a backpacking trip in the Alpine Lakes wilderness. And one of the locations we really love is Big Heart Lake. So we wanted to beat the crowds and get started nice and early, especially since it was going to be a very hot weekend. And as we were climbing through, we noticed that it was a lot more overgrown than it used to be. Back in the day, every section was pretty open and you were exposed to the sun most of the time. And now you get actually quite a bit of shade if you start at the right time of the morning. On this trip, you have a lot of different lakes that you can explore and they're all beautiful. And it's definitely worth going to. And after hours of hiking, it's time to cook some food. With full bellies and plenty of daylight left, we wanted to explore past Big Heart and see what other lakes are around. If you're not familiar with the Alpine Lakes Wilderness, there are literally lakes everywhere you look and they're all beautiful and unique in their own way. But in this section, a lot of the lakes are really cliffy and they're difficult to get to. And on top of that, a lot of times campsites are really difficult to find. But as you can see, it takes a lot of effort to get to these places, but the reward is totally worth it. And every moment that we spend out there is absolutely magical. The problem is not everyone that comes out to these places know how to leave these areas the way they found them. And I will explain more about that here in a moment. Let's talk about that last scene. As you can see, there was probably eight to 10 tents that just set up right on top of all the bushes. Now, we're out here in the beautiful Alpine and this is only uncovered by snow a couple months out of the year, which means the plants only have a couple months out of the year to actually grow. Now those type of plants take forever to grow. And we know when those people showed up, they came in late last night and uh, they just came in three separate groups and all met up and set up their tents and just plopped them down and you know if if a couple people do that probably doesn't make too much impact on the bushes but when other people see that then they start to follow suit and so please take note if you can find a dedicated campsite uh, there's lots of other options um, there was way less people here when they came through than there is right now so we know that there's plenty of room for them to actually set up camp but they chose to decide to destroy some of the beautiful alpine plants that we have around here so take that as a learning lesson if you're out there and you're backpacking and you're showing up to an area late look for the best campsite where you, you will cause the least amount of damage and leave as little of impact as possible once you're done backpacking so here's another note. If you show up to a parking lot and the dedicated parking lot is full and the road leading to the dedicated parking lot is completely backed up with parked cars, that's an indication that there's too many people at that trail. When you see that, 
that's probably a good time to turn around and find a different location. Now I know a lot of people are trying to get outside, but these areas can only handle so many people. And this lake is cliffy around 90% of it. And there's not very many spots for campsites. But the more people we try to pack into these places, the more damage we do. So hopefully we can keep these places as pristine as possible and we can keep coming back to them for the next couple of decades. Okay, now for another learning opportunity. So, you've seen a lot of video of Sarah walking on the way up here. And about a month ago, she actually did a pretty good sprain on her ankle, which I'll show you a photo. And as you can see, it was pretty swollen. So what she did is she stepped into some roots and her foot got stuck and then she launched forward and it completely tweaked her ankle. Now I gave her some advice and she didn't quite listen to all of it. If you have a spouse, you know what I'm talking about. But she did hear parts of it. But what she heard is that she needs to keep range of movement. That is true, especially when you injure an area, you don't wanna lose your full range of motion. But when you have a sprain, what's happening when you sprain something? It's getting overstretched, right? So if you're just stretching ever and over, after an overstretching injury, that's not exactly what you need. That's just a small, small little thing for the whole picture to get back to um, full movement and health of that area, right? It's been a month, she was able to get up here, which is great, but some of the key things that you wanna be looking at is improving strength of the injured area and then improving stabilization right? Especially with hiking. Your ankles are going through all these different types of movements and they're bending and they're coming back and they're rolling. You want to be training that way after an injury so that if you do get into a situation where your ankle rolls, your body is used to that motion and it bounces back with no injury, right? So you got to be working on all those three different areas so that you have the least amount of pain and your ankle will last you for the rest of your life. Thank you for coming to his TED Talk. Okay, here is our sleep system. And it's kind of messy right now because we're about to pack up, but it's actually pretty organized. But the tent that we almost always use is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Ultimate uh, two-person tent, which could actually fit four people if you sleep the way we do. And then as we come in here, we use a two-person feathered friends i think it's a spoon bill uh sleeping bag so it's actually very very warm uh very comfortable and both of us can fit into it really well and then what we got for this trip that we are testing out is a new sleeping pad go ahead and show that and it's an x-ped two-person sleeping pad um, and it's a winter version because we do a lot of stuff out in winter or on snow and ice but um, so far I'm really liking it because uh, structurally it seems pretty sound um, a lot of times sleeping pads at least for me because I have a big booty uh, tend to uh, not be as strong in the hip area so then it causes some low back pain and this one so far has been pretty good so we'll we'll see how long it lasts hopefully it's built really well and it lasts a long time but so far we're pretty happy about it two things to know about each product too the sleeping pad has two different areas that you have to uh, blow up so it's split down the middle so you have one section to blow up on the left side and one section to blow up on the right side which is really nice if you want kind of different consistency um you know, if you like your side firmer, if she likes her side softer, whatever you and your partner decide on. Um, so that's really nice that it's versatile like that. And then with the sleeping bag, I actually can have my leg like all the way to the other side, which some people may or may not like. I like because we still figure out our own space in this and you're not confined to one split side for your side of the sleeping bag. So there is at the top right here, it's split so that when you climb in you have your own side right here but then there's no split down the middle so figured I would say that as well 
but overall we're super super happy with our sleeping setup it took us a little while to get to this point and obviously we've tried a lot of different things so this has been a winner for us Okay, with my ranting over and Sarah finishing up talking about our sleep system, it was definitely time to jump into the water and just relax and cool off. Now, where we were, it was very warm. Like, this was one of the hottest weekends of the entire year. So jumping into the freezing cold lake, it almost wasn't cold enough for me. So it felt very refreshing to jump in and uh, swim around. But it was time for us to make our way back out of here and start going home. The nice part about hiking around in the Alpine Lakes wilderness in the summer is even on the hot days, there's plenty of places for you to stop and dunk your head in the water. Now, there's also a lot of really scenic areas like giant waterfalls in the distance. So you're never bored while you're trekking. That is probably what draws me the most to this wilderness area. Now at Summit for Wellness, I help people to move more, eat well, and be adventurous. And if you enjoyed this type of adventure, then please hit that subscribe button and the like button so that you can see more of the adventures we have coming up. And keep climbing to the peak of your health.